so good to speak with you today to talk about Tuskegee's reopening plans. Like all colleges and universities around the country, we've been grappling with how to address this pandemic and what will be the best way for us to offer our academic experiences to students in the fall. Tuskegee has decided to reopen in the fall. We will be bringing back to campus first year students and some sophomores, some ROTC students and honor students to live on campus and we will be, we have off campus housing for all students who want to be in the area. We're going to be offering classes that are face to face, that are virtual or online, and that are hybrid, a combination of face to face and online classes. So this opportunity gives students the greatest um, option in terms of deciding which learning experience works well for them. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, many colleges and universities have decided to offer all classes virtually. Why has Tuskegee decided on a hybrid model? We've decided that the face-to-face -face interaction between students and faculty is very important, especially for our first-year students. Because of this, we've decided to bring students back, first-year students back to campus so that they have a full first year experience where they are engaged with faculty, with each other, and with staff on campus. Now granted, coming back to Tuskegee this semester is going to be very different. It's what we're calling the new normal. It's not going to be the Tuskegee of last year because we'll be instituting physical distancing, wearing of masks, hand sanitizing, and so forth, other guidelines that will help prevent the spread of the COVID-19 virus. But we feel that it's so important for first-year students to have this opportunity to really bond and connect with each other and with faculty during their first year at Tuskegee University. So it's because of this that we decided to bring first-year students back and have the kind of class models, meaning hybrid, face-to-face -face and virtual that will allow students the opportunity to choose which classes work best for them. What factors did you weigh in deciding on this approach? Well, there were four factors that were predominant in our deciding on this approach. Of course, the first are the public health considerations. We knew that the low, a lower population density would be important for the campus. So by reducing the number of students who live on campus, we knew that we would have a step toward preventing the spread of the virus. So with regard to enrollment, that was quite important for us. Secondly is engagement. As I said earlier, we wanted to provide opportunities for first year students to really have some strong engagement and connection with faculty and staff and other first year students. Lastly, we looked at the way in which we could schedule classes. We are extending the class day from eight in the morning until eight in the evening so that we have longer class periods as well as longer periods in between classes to allow for frequent cleaning of classrooms and auditoriums. So those specific factors, public health considerations, lower enrollment density, engagement, and scheduling of classes allowed us to make the decision about offering face-to-face, -face, hybrid, and online classes. One of the most important considerations for colleges and universities is how to keep students, faculty, and staff safe during the pandemic. What measures has Tuskegee put in place to help protect the community? Physical distancing is an important guideline. Throughout the campus, we are ensuring that people stay six feet away from each other. And you might be wondering, what does that look like? How do you go about doing that? Let me give you an example. For all of the residence halls rooms, we walked them and measured them so that we could determine if this room was large enough for two people or one person, given the physical distancing requirement of six feet, six feet separation. When there was not that six feet separation, those residence hall rooms have only one person 
residing there in them. So that is why we have a lower number of rooms that are available to all students. Throughout the campus, you will see markings on the floor, for example, in the cafeteria, to keep people six feet apart from each other so that lines don't build up. When students come on campus and get in line to pay their bills and so forth, when they first arrive, they will be, we will be doing this in the gymnasium, in the arena, and there will be markers on the floor so that people are six feet away from each other. So there will be signage throughout campus reminding people how important it is to stay six feet away from each other. And in addition, frequent hand washing is going to be a requirement and a must. And when people are not able to wash hands frequently, there will be hand sanitizing stations throughout the campus. We've increased the number of hand sanitizing stations and towels and soap and whatever throughout the campus, in the classrooms and so on, so that people know how important it is to keep their hands clean. Physical distancing will also be apparent in all of our classrooms and auditoriums. When you walk into a classroom, you will see, you cannot sit next to somebody. You can't go like this and say, what did the professor say? The next person will be six feet away from each other and we've demarcated those seats so that people will know how, what is the safe distance between them and their neighbor. So those are the requirements that we've put into place. In addition, each student, faculty, and staff member who comes to campus must have a negative COVID-19 test. Students are able to get those testings, tests done before they come to campus and they can submit them as part of their health packet. And for those faculty and staff who are, who are in the area, we, were, we are having testing done right here on campus so that we are making it much more accessible for everyone to get their testing done, get a clear test before they come back to campus. How will the hybrid model work at Tuskegee? When each student registers for a class, the class will have a, a code next to it that says face-to-face, -face, that says online or virtual, or says hybrid, which is a combination of the two. So a student can choose which classes they want to take. If I am a junior and I live in California and I decide that I do not want to, to uh, fly across country and take my chances with face-to-face -face classes that may or may not be available to me, I can ch take all of my classes online. So I go through the course schedule and I choose those classes that are online. What we're doing is that we're making the course schedule more flexible. So if a student says a class I need right now is not being offered, we will be offering it in the spring. We want to make sure that everybody has the options available to them so that they're going to be able to graduate on time. When it comes to taking hybrid classes, faculty again will make the decision regarding how they would go about setting up those hybrid classes so that they can have a, a, a split between face-to-face -face and the virtual component of their classes. Which students will be able to live on campus? First-year students predominantly will be living on campus. There will be some spaces for some sophomores, but the majority of the students will be first-year students as well as honor students and our ROTC students who, have, who, who are required to live on campus. And again, as I said before, our focus has been on freshman students because we feel that it's most important for them to be engaged with the campus community. How will student support services be offered? Well, we're doing so much of it virtually right now. All of our wraparound services, such as tutoring and the writing center and so forth, can be done virtually. Students can sign up virtually and have those appointments done virtually. We will also have people on campus to provide services as well. So students who live on campus have a choice between whether or not they want to go to the office 
for a tutoring session or a writing session or do it virtually. But we provide all of these services to all of our students because we know that, especially during this time, when things are so different than what we've been expecting, we need to provide all of the support that we can for each and every student. How will campus activities be conducted? Well, we're getting very creative in this arena. Some activities will be done face-to-face -face and in-person with physical distancing guidelines. But remember, we have a limit of 100 people at any event. So with the first year class of about 600 people, we're going to have to have events, six events for 600 people uh, each. So we are doing some virtual experiences with our students. For example, virtual mic, mics, virtual comedy mics, uh, virtual drone exhibits, virtual competitions, virtual sports exhibits, and so on. So we're getting very creative to find ways to do virtual experiences and recreational experiences that will help students to have a good time and get to know each other. Tuskegee's culture is built around face-to-face -face engagement among students, faculty, and staff. What is being done to ensure that virtual learning is a viable alternative to in-person learning? Well, what we know about virtual learning is, is that it takes a lot more effort for faculty to teach virtually, and it takes a lot more effort for students to learn virtually. Very often we think that as a student, oh gee, it's an online class. I can just, I can just look at the lectures online and that'll be it. But it takes a lot of concentration and, 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 and study time to be able to get what you need to get out of an online class. Think of it this way. It's harder to get a virtual study buddy when you are in an online class than when you're in a face-to-face -to -face class and you say to your neighbors, well, why don't we get together after dinner tonight and have a study session? So it takes an increased effort. So what we're doing now is, is having increased faculty development opportunities to continue the online training that our faculty are getting with a focus on engagement. And that's what's so important when it comes to online delivery of instruction. It's not so much how you present the material, but the extent to which you engage with your students. And we also need to help students learn better ways of engaging with their faculty and with other students during these online experiences. How will the Tuskegee student experience continue if the student body is virtual and remote? Well, we are going to rely on students' love of the Tuskegee experience and really taking up and putting their arms around a new way of doing things at Tuskegee University. It's all about our being there for each other. And sometimes being there for each other means that we may not be there physically with each other, but we're there virtually. And one of the things so many of us know after several months of Zoom meetings is that you can kind of start to get to know somebody through Zoom meetings. And you develop this new way of interacting with other people. It's, it's a different way of interacting, yet it's still an important way of connecting with other people. And so we're going to be focusing on the uh, advantages of that, those ways of connecting with others and creating a sense of community. With the changes the university is implementing to deal with COVID-19, life at Tuskegee will not be the same as it has in the past. How will you lead the community in adjusting to this new reality? It's all about our reinforcing the idea of shared community responsibility. Everybody is empowered to look out for each other. We're creating a community where it's okay for me to say to somebody, you know, you really need to have your mask on right now. Or, you know, we really shouldn't be this close right now. Or no, we shouldn't be 
giving each other a hug right now. So we need to make it okay for people to be open and direct about what we need to do to look out for each other. And when we can do that, then we create an environment where people know that we're all in this together and let's do our part. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us about Tuskegee's plans for reopening in the fall. What parting message would you like to share with the community about Tuskegee moving forward during these times? You know, this is a time when the country is feeling the aftermath and the ripple effects of months and months of dealing with COVID-19. And sometimes people don't know when is the end going to happen? When are we going to get back to normal? It's important that we stay optimistic. It's important that we believe that we will get through this together as a community, as a community of Tuskegee University students, faculty and staff working in concert with our community partners. All of us are signing Golden Tiger pledges especially our students who will say, we're golden tigers, let's do our part. We have a shared responsibility to ourselves and to each other. It's the finest way, the finest way to live out the dreams of Booker T. Washington and uphold the, the very important tenets of what it means to be part of the Mother Tuskegee family.